Uh, I'd like to present the uh, talk dedicated to study of cosmic ray ensembles. So I will present the results of my simulation as a way of tackling this problem. Uh, so I will also speak about analyzing some simple scenarios uh, and present the results as well as discuss the future improvements of this technique. Uh, so let's start from the definition of, of cosmic ray ensembles. Our current uh, research, uh, cosmic ray research, is focused on the reconstruction of, of extensive air showers produced by single particle coming into the Earth's atmosphere. And uh, for this, we require large statistics uh, and uh, a large arrays of detectors, which are of kilometer, thousand uh, kilometers square kilometers square uh, uh, scale. Mm, if we are speaking about the OSHA collaboration. But in contrary, one can easily imagine the, the same process, like the production of, of a cascade of some particles happening along above the Earth's atmosphere, basically anywhere in space. And for this, we do not specify the type of interaction and the type of, of process, the type of particles. But what is important, it is a result when the numerous particles come arrive on top of the atmosphere and this produces numerous air showers correlated in time or in space and uh, the area where we can place the detectors to study this phenomena could be way way larger than than the largest existing observatories uh, on earth so basically we're limited by the size of the Earth, and uh, it fits into the creed of our paradigm to have, uh, have a large global size detector consistent of various detectors of various types and sizes. Uh, so basically, uh, if uh, we compare the conditions and we switch from a single cosmic ray particle in the present research to numerous particles, but already two particles are enough to speak about cosmic ray ensembles. Uh, so the plausible roadmap to study this phenomena could uh, include several steps. I'm currently speaking about simulating this phenomena down to the to their way to the Earth's atmosphere and to link this study with uh, some observa ob observables on the ground we need to simulate the air showers, uh, to simulate detector response, which will result in observation and uh, confirming or restricting some limits uh, of, of uh, observation. And so the uh, scenarios which could potentially lead to the production of cosmic ray ensembles are, are already known and described in the literature. The first scenario uh, probably it's where it's all started from, called the pre-shower, uh, when the photon uh, undergoes magnetic flare production, uh, just entering the uh, Earth's magnetosphere, and due to the synchrotron of radiation of electron-positron pair, it produces uh, some cascade already on top of the atmosphere. But uh, so here, uh, just to put you into context, uh, such pre-showers, such cascades contain type of hundreds of particles and they are not uh, too sparse, so, so they are typically of centimeters or meter size. A similar effect can also occur uh, at the vicinity of, of, of the sun in the uh, solar magnetosphere when a photon can undergo the same pair production process nearby the sun. And what is important, and is one of the um, pioneer credo um, researches by Dr. Nirash et al. So what is important, then we can expect the typical footprints on top of the atmosphere. So please mind the difference in scale, and we can observe some very, very elongated ellipsoids, uh, thousands kilometers long, and like up to kilometer wide. So basically, they could be uh, interpreted as lines. 
we will be uh, uh, here again uh, after some time i, I will uh, probably comment on this later so uh, and uh, we can um, explain this uh, elongated footprints with, with uh, uh, bending of uh, oppositely charged particles by uh, a magnetic field so so by sun magnet solar magnetic field in this example okay so let me uh, stick to my research. So uh, I was using the CO proper uh, propagating code. Uh, it uh, operates with su such notions as source, as uh, an observer surface. And uh, basically I what I did is uh, taking electrons on uh, primary particles one by one, injecting them and studying the distribution of the product particles on some observer surface. Why I uh, told you about the electrons? So I, I chose this particle as something which is uh, inevitably present in space during, to, to make the whole task uh, general. So the, uh, like also addressing among the others, uh, the, the ultra high energy photons, which are expected to produce electron positron pairs or electrons maybe could be accelerated to, to, to some energies or okay so being produced bottom up or top down so here you can see the electron as a primary particle and i was also limited by some processes and uh, chose uh, the synchrotron radiation as uh, the only process of energy loss uh, by synchrotron because uh, because of uh, magnetic fields being everywhere basically so the process is inevitable and why the only one is uh, just because of uh, some technical problems because i wanted to to take as large uh, energy span between the primary and the secondary particles and for this i, I had to take the problem of well, the code running, the computational resources available, and so on. So I limited uh, myself with synchrotron radiation. So what we have is electron and the cascade consisting of synchrotron photons. The next part, yes. Uh, so uh, how uh, I needed a trick to to make my code running. So for this, I made, uh, proposed a, a very simple model when uh, the synchrotron photons, instead of being uh, carried by the code one by one, all the propagation steps, and basically all uh, along the straight lines, uh, we assume that uh, the part of trajectory of primary electron will be orthogonally uh, um, pro projected onto some of the surface, which was taken as a plane, and uh, everything else uh, comes from from some simple geometry because for, for small uh, opening angles uh, corresponding to huge observer uh, distances from the ejection point, the surface quite uh, well represents all the types of the observer surface observer plane. So here we skip the propagation of uh, the photons initially, but uh, lose, uh, so, so we know that all the photons generated here land somewhere uh, on the correspondent projection of, on, of observer surface. And uh, um, the price paid for that is uh, completely uh, lost information about the precise uh, um, distribution of the product particles on the observer surface, which is needed to estimate uh, chances uh, of, of the registration of some particles coming from, from some observer distance. So I thus had to uh, reintroduce the distribution of particles which I use as two simple models. One is completely uh, non-physical and uh, it, it assumes that the photons are distributed 
equidistantly. So the value of this model is just uh, keeping some uh, very simple uh, and general information of the phenomenon. And uh, the other case was a proportional distribution of, of, of photons. Proportional in this context means that the uh, fraction of distances between any two pairs of, of dots is uh, the same uh, uh, on the observer surface as uh, they were generated along the part of electron tra trajectory. And uh, the key uh, observable which could be taken from this uh, simple math is uh, the value which corresponds to the uh, maximal uh, observer distance for the cosmic ray ensemble consistent of only two photons. So you, you can guess that this value corresponds to, to minimal opening angle in this uh, geometric case. So this brings me to some results. Uh, so this plot shows the, the, the concept and here we histogrammed uh, the, all the uh, distances between the neighbor and photons uh, in green. So red corresponds to the previously equidistant case. We can see that uh, for a single propagation step, the distances uh, which we are looking for are spread in a wide um, uh, range. And uh, Equipped with this tool, uh, I analyzed two uh, astrophysics scenarios. One corresponds to a galactic, a galactic center as a source of um, high energy photons, uh, electrons. Sorry, um, for this simulation, I did some Monte Carlo using uh, some randomly chosen di directions from the galactic center. The threshold. Uh, for for the product particles, the threshold, uh, this one, and uh, I produced uh, more than two thousand runs, which uh, then could be summarized to compare the uh, two uh, already mentioned uh, cases of distribution of particles over the observer surface. So green is proportional, uh, red is equidistance. So probably there is no reason to speak about equidistant once again, but what we can bring out of this, these plots, uh, which differ from, so this plot is produced for one chosen energy of the electron and one different, uh, and one chosen direction. Uh, while here we uh, scrambled all the energies of, of the electron we used for given the direction. What we can take from here is that uh, some events like being to the right hand side of the vertical line representing the uh, galaxy. Uh, so while uh, some events fall uh, beyond the galactic size, we can claim that already some cosmic ray ensemble consisting of two photons could be produced outside of the galaxy. This number is obviously not, this fraction is not too large, but already some, so, so such events are not excluded. The other astrophysics scenarios that are used uh, corresponds to, to the uniform distribution of, of um, primary electrons over the galaxy. We refer to it, uh, coining the name of SHDM, superior dark matter model. So uh, the reasoning is that uh, within this model, it's uh, an exotic model because sources of uh, high, uh, heavy particles, which could be the sources of ultra high energy photons are uh, everywhere. And uh, the photons immediately produce an electron positron pair. And there we go. So, uh, Analyzing the plot from this scenario, we basically observe the similar uh, conclusion, uh, meaning that uh, some events, some cosmic ray ensembles 
two photon cosmic ray ensembles could be produced outside the galaxy. But there is no problem with production uh, overall so throughout the galaxy. What is missing in uh, the initial model was tried to be fixed uh, in the next edition of the code. So basically, um, I introduced more precise scaling of, of the orthogonal projection. What the most important improvement was implementation of synchrotron cone because the uh, photons are believed to be distributed within a uh, very narrow cone dependent on Lorentz factor. Uh, when the primary particles propagate through the magnetic field, I also introduced a gradual energy loss, but it's uh, kind of an improvement of the uh, simulating uh, code itself. Mm, uh, I mark this point with red uh, because it's uh, it produces uh, the more uh, the most uh, important changes in the result. So here I plotted the the example of uh, distribution of, uh, of a photons in a footprint. And if we compare the scales, so this particular uh, footprint is like uh, tens of kilometers long with meters wide. So which is a good connection to already shown results of very elongated ellipsoids. And so instead of an artificial line shown in blue here, we have a, a very oblate ellipsoid. And uh, after uh, calculating the example distributions of the distance from the observer of, of, of the uh, source of two photon CRE, we obtain that not a few photons could be produced like previously outside uh, of the galaxy, but there is quite a, a parameter space for observer distances uh, and uh, the uh, the size of a Cree here, and nearly all events from one steps uh, could fit into our, our previous conclusions, making them more optimistic in terms of, of uh, expecting the CRE on of, uh, being comparable to the other side. And some conclusions and outlook uh, could be seen on the next slides. So, so the general outcome is uh, that the optimization of the code, more detailed simulations are required to complete uh, this part of, of the research. So basically that's it. Thank you, Alex. So we have time for questions. The first, first is the audience here, Jerzy. There is that those photons would be exceeding 1 GeV, but what, uh, what is uh, their energy distribution? Because 1 GeV at the, above the atmosphere won't produce a shower that could be observed. Yeah, so, but uh, I believe that uh, I, I didn't uh, produce, okay, I, I don't have here the energy distribution of these photons, but uh, so this distribution will not be correct in any case, because of some technical process, because I introduced this uh, parameter limiting the uh, energies of, of synchrotron photons just to make the code run. So whenever you choose different energy, so, so you, you should ex expect a peak in this energy distribution, but this peak is not physical, but it's introduced with the code. So basically, the question, your question probably uh, falls beyond uh, the topic of this talk. And, and uh, yeah, so, so I, I realized that uh, merging the uh, before the atmosphere simulations and, and simulation of air showers is a different story. Okay, any questions from remote participants? I don't see any, any hands. Maybe I, I just uh, have my own comments and, and questions. So. If we are going to summarize your work in a few words, I think we can say safely that cosmic ray ensembles with galactic origin are not hopeless in terms of observation. Would you agree? 
yes it, <laughs> and moreover it's not it's a uh, it's not hopeless but it's very optimistic so, but the problem so, so it's it's a strong statement you see yeah. it's a completely new phenomenon and it's optimistic in terms of observation so that that's also why alex i will re repeat and this is the question where, when can we expect a peer review to article uh, okay <laughs> so the work is ongoing uh, yeah. So uh, another thing, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to repeat that one of our close co collaborators and also connected today is Brian McBrin, a pioneer uh, person in, in, this, in this approach, in pre-showering in galaxy. And I'm, I'm just, I'm not sure if Brian is willing to, to say a few words to us, but I'm going to share his article uh, actually, I was not aware of this work. He just contacted us after after some other article, not by Alex, by Bojana Ponsilius, and he pointed out to, to a very early work dated 1978. I just want to share my screen. I have it. I have it ready. You see, Alex, how old were you at? in 1978, I think. <laughs> I, I was on the project. <laughs> exactly. And I was three years old. You see? And and, and Brian, as it's, it's, I said, it's he's my personal hero. He he, It's not that we've contacted him. It's him who was following the literature, noticing our work, and and pointing to even more articles so so it's really amazing and we are very happy i'm i'm personally very happy to have brian on board and and supporting us so thank you brian if you hear us if you want to say something then you are welcome if not then we will continue with the next talk thanks thanks to the speaker